Nikola Tesla seems to be a central figure in your book. Why do you single him out? He is the most interesting man I've ever studied. Uh, Tesla grew up in Croatia and emigrated to the U.S. in uh, 1884 at age 28. Uh, he was an odd man, very tall, very thin, uh, with a lot of hang-ups. Among other things, he had an inordinate amount of uh, fear of germs. Uh, he needed to count steps while he was walking, couldn't touch human hair, and everything he did needed to be divisible by three. He also had an unusually vivid imagination. In his youth, he would travel to foreign places in his mind, uh, talk to people there, make friends, and it was often impossible for him to tell what was real and what was imagined. As he grew up, these pictures changed to inventions. Uh, the experience was preceded by a flash whenever he discovered something unusual, uh, new, and significant. He came to the United States to see Edison. Uh, he wanted to sell him an idea. Edison was the big man in uh, electrical power, but he had a problem. The natural form of electrical power is AC. Uh, because it's produced by the rotating magnets in a, in a generator. The direction of the current changes 50 or 60 times a second, which is perfect for a transformer, but it was thought bad for a motor. How could a uh, uh, how could you make a motor the turn in one direction when the current constantly reversed? So the choice was between an AC system which allowed the voltage to be stepped up, uh, transmitted over long distance and uh, over much thinner copper wires and then stepped down for actual use. It could power light bulbs but no motors or you could convert it into DC at the generator which then could power light bulbs and motors but it had to be at one voltage only. Edison had chosen DC at 110 volts which meant that there had to be a power plant every two miles. Tesla thought this was all wrong. Uh, in one of his flashes, he had seen the solution to the problem, uh, a radically different AC system, which allowed, trans allowed transformers and powered not only light bulbs, but also motors. He vividly saw this system in his head, could see it operate and judge its performance without needing any drawings. He never got to talk to Edison. He struggled on his own in New York, managed to build a few parts for his system, and then published a stunning paper about it. Uh, George Westinghouse immediately recognized its, its advantage and snapped it up. Nikola Tesla now had a substantial amount of money. He opened a laboratory in New York and experimented with higher frequencies. Uh, at first he pushed his AC generators to deliver up to 25,000 hertz or oscillations per second, up from 60. Then he discarded the rotating machinery and built high frequency or what we now call radio frequency uh, generators with coils, capacitors, and spark, spark gaps only. Here his genius showed again. He, he was years ahead of Marconi and everybody else. 
but while others aimed at transmitting Morse code, Tesla had in mind transmitting power, large amounts of it without wires. In 1899, he suddenly went to Colorado Springs, where he built a huge coil connected to an, an antenna mast. He managed to light up a light bulb 25 miles away, but it took a large amount of power to do it, so much power that he actually burned out the power station. The following year he was back on the East Coast building a 170 foot antenna tower and powerful transmitter on Long Island, and it was financed by J.P. Morgan. Morgan believed that Tesla was going to transmit Morse code to Europe uh, trying to beat Marconi. But what Tesla had in mind was quite different. He believed that with six of these towers and transmitters distributed all over the world, anybody could stick a rod into the ground and withdraw an infinite amount of power. When he ran out of money and went to Morgan for more, he had to come clean and reveal the true purpose of the project. Morgan pulled the plug. Not only didn't it make sense to him to finance the distribution of energy for free, his science advisor told him that the scheme was utter fantasy. Tesla was now 43 years old and he lived for another 43 years and produced nothing of note. His fable mental imaging had worked twice, but then failed him. He would occasionally announce fantastic schemes, uh, such as a death ray which could shoot down 10,000 airplanes 250 miles away. None of them had any scientific basis. He had crossed the line between genius and madness.